8,204. We were sold out. Uh, the gate was 9.75 million. Uh, the performance of the night went to uh, uh, Gomes and Duplessis, and then the fight of the night was Moreno and Pantoja. Uh, I know you guys are probably going to ask me about Hooker. He did break his wrist. His wrist was broken in the second round. Um, and Moreno did break his hand in the first round. Who's got the first question? John Morgan. What's happening, buddy? How much, man? Uh, Daniel, talk about the main event, Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, I know you just put Jose Aldo in the Hall of Fame, but Volk might be the greatest featherweight of all time. Uh, just what did you think of his performance this evening and, and kind of where he stands? Total domination, man. He looked incredible. Um, you know, and, and I, I can't remember if it was a big straight right hand or left hand. He, he, he took, looked like it, it shook him a little bit, but he didn't even stop. He kept going and... and uh, yeah, I mean, he put on an unbelievable performance tonight. And, and Yair is so talented. And, you know, Volk even uh, at the end there started to strike with him, stayed on the outside side of, of uh, you know, uh, Yair was trying to keep him on the outside and hitting him with some big shots, and Volk was willing to stand with him. The guy is an absolute freak. He's incredibly talented. Yeah. He said he's going to have to have surgery, so we know he's going to be out for a while. But he keeps talking about he wants to go back to lightweight and get that. You know, when he comes back, do you think he's better off staying at featherweight, or do you have interest in seeing him make that lightweight move again? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, let, let's see how his surgery goes and what happens. And, you know, he, he's at one of those places now in his career. Whatever he wants to do, what are we going to say? You know what I mean? This guy's literally proven himself a million times. Many people believe he won, you know, the, the, the Islam fight. Whatever he wants to do, we'll, we'll probably roll with it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Pantoja, obviously, fight of the night, incredible title fight there. Uh, just what did you think of him tonight? You know, Jonas got up. Yeah, we sent both those guys straight to the hospital as soon as that fight was over. Absolute dog fight. Incredible war. N nothing but respect for both guys. An amazing fight. It's a unique position, right? Because a fight that great, a, a champion losing the belt, close fight, great fight, you might want to do a rematch, but they fought three times already. Right. So, does that kind of eliminate the opportunity, or was that good enough that maybe they could go for it? It's like the Figueredo fight. I mean, it's so good. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know the answer to that question right now, but I don't think there's anybody on earth that wouldn't want to see that fight again. It was so good and so close. Yeah. have to ask you about uh, Israel Adesanya coming into the cage tonight, Drigas Duplessis, the big win. I guess uh, the decision to bring him in, not something you do all the time. Well, there was a big debate over it. I didn't, I didn't want to do it. First of all, what I don't like to do is when you have somebody like Duplessis who just, big win for him, you know what I mean? He just beat the, the second best guy in the world in that division. And then, you know, somebody's going to get in their face and get aggressive with him again after they just got done getting out of a, a, a war. Um, but uh, Adesanya and I had a, had a debate over it, and he promised me that nothing crazy would happen. So we did it. You know, I know you say, hey, this is the fight business. People say nasty things, right? But the tension between those two and kind of the racial undertones and all those things, how do you... What were the racial undertones? Uh, Drigga says he's the real African fighter, and so, you know, Israel dropped some N-words yeah. in there tonight. So what was the racial... Who did? Who dropped the, the racial... Is Israel it? was saying over and over, yeah. He's, he's black. 50 N-bombs in Okay, there. he's black. He... Who gives a shit? I was going to say, so you don't oh. have any concern about the way the build up, the tension between those two? I could care less. This is the fight business. Israel Adesanya can say whatever he wants to say. Who gives a shit? Why, are, are people bitching about that? Some people. Of course yeah. they are. Oh, fucking A. All right, got it. Yeah. Too fucking bad. All right. Yeah. Let, last thing for me, then, I just want to add, everybody say that's a fight that everybody wants to see. Is nine weeks in Sydney a possibility? We haven't seen Drigas yet, so we don't know what kind of condition he's in. Is that a possibility, or is that too soon? I don't know. We got, we got to see, I mean, when you come out of a night like tonight, these fights were all tough wars. They were, you know, um, we'll see how these guys feel. And, and again, when you, when you come out of a fight like this, um, you know, like Pantoja and, and, and Moreno and, and Duplessis, and uh, you got to give these guys a couple weeks to go home and relax and, you know, let their bodies heal and spend some time with their families. And it's just, it's just things that you just don't talk about right after the fight. 
Not know. that we haven't in the past, and you know you make a fight if a guy had a great night. or whatever. Robbie Lawler, if he wanted to fight again. There you go. You know what I mean? But he retired, so. Dana, to your uh, left. Yeah. Hey, Kev. First of all, I want to ask you, it seemed like this was one of the best cards in a long time, top to bottom, where you had a lot of incredible finishes and whatnot. Can you put it, you know, maybe UFC 189 was another one of the cards. Is there any card that leaps to mind that compares to this one in terms of the amount of finishes? I don't know. Off the top of my head, I, I mean, I know we've had some great cards. Tonight was just like that. You know, everybody knew it was, a, it was a great card. This whole week, International Fight Week, tons of great stuff going on. And uh, I, I just think that you couldn't have topped off a, a great international fight with any better than tonight. The energy in the place was off the charts. The fights were incredible. You know, these kids fought their hearts out tonight. The Robbie Lawler story, how it unfolds and how he, you know, retires. And, um, yeah, it was, it was the perfect night. It was, it was awesome. Off the top of your head again, you know, a question, it's a tough question. You look at Moreno and uh, Pantoja and say that might be fight of the year. It seemed to me, especially through four rounds, you know, it, it was just an incredible fight. I don't disagree. And, and, and one of the things that I let, listen, when you, when you get like, I've been saying this for years and I've been saying it leading up to this fight, the whole Mexico thing. You know, when you get a, a Mexican from Mexico and they fight, the, the, the fan base is incredible. It's, it's, it's like, it's like England. It's like these other countries when they, when they get behind their people, Ireland, whatever you, whatever country you want to think about, you know, it's fun when you have you know, a real Mexican fight in a fight. The crowd's incredible. It's electric. And uh, I don't even know what the hell you asked me, but yeah. yeah. Right. Was that fight of the year in your opinion? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was up there. It was a great fight. Yeah, I want to ask you about Volkanovski. Obviously, you said before he was tremendous and he's good. He seems like he's good in so many areas. You know, Lene told me the other day when he said, she mentioned there was 140 media people. He thought he had 100 more interviews. Than that, <laughs> and he's the kind of guy that seems like he does good work in every area of his responsibility. I wonder if you could just kind of comment on sort of him as not just the fighter, but, you know, as a company man for you guys. Well, it's that, whole, it's that whole team that he comes from. When you look at Israel Adesanya, Israel Adesanya is ready to fight anybody, anywhere, anytime. You know, him and Peta had, had that back and forth for a long time. He didn't care. He wanted to fight him. Volkanovski's willing to fight anybody. When you look at Volk, you know, every guy he fights, uh, reach and... You know, the size and reach advantage that everybody has on him. He doesn't care. He's a savage. He gets in there and he, and, he, and he handles his business. Hooker, tonight, breaks his wrist in the second round. I didn't even know. I had no idea. Um, Rogan and those guys must have hurt him in the corner. Um, that, that whole team is badass. Yeah, he told Mark Smith, he said, if you raise my hand, if I win, raise it gently because my uh, wrist is hurting. He goes, I think I broke, he said he broke his elbow is what he had told Mark Smith. Got it. That was pretty crazy. Um, one, one last thing, you know, just uh, do you think Volkanovski is one of those guys that will be appreciated more when he's gone, right? Because he's not flashy at anything. He's good at everything, but he's not flashy at everything. You know, where you had Anderson Silva was, you know, like flashy knockouts and everything. Volk seems like he just gets the job done, you know, no matter what the area is. And do you think when he's retired and we're looking back on his career and debating whether it was him or Max Holloway or Jose Aldo as the GOAT, of that division that will appreciate him more later than we maybe maybe he gets now. I think that's usually the case with with all athletes that, that, that are great during their era. Um, you know, I think I think the same about John Jones. I, I don't think John Jones is appreciated the way that he should be appreciated, and definitely Volkanovski is one of those guys. But when you look at our business, you know, Australia and New Zealand are a big part of our business as far as pay per view goes, and Volkanovski is definitely a big star. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer, but yeah. Dana, over here. Yeah. Other side. yeah. Um, what went into the thought to give Robbie that tribute video? Because we've had fighters like Shogun and Frank Edgar announce their retirement before their fight, and they didn't get the video. Well, I, I don't think we've ever really confirmed that, you know, somebody was retiring or whatever. Robbie and I have had several conversations. He, he's done. There's no whatever. And uh, so we did it. Can you think of another, like, obviously Amanda just happened, but to Robbie Lawler. And thank God we made that video because uh, we still had 25 minutes left on ABC. So, thank God. Can you, can, I know Amanda just retired, and she put, like, the belts down, and that was, seemed to be a perfect ending. But can you think of another, like, an MMA history that a lot of people in line seem to think this is the best retirement moment we've had in the sport? Yeah, those are two really good ones. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know. And the, and the big question was, you know, after that quick knockout, is he really done? Did you guys talk to him already? Yeah. Yeah, he was like at 2 o'clock today, he knew. He felt great, felt better than he's ever felt. And, you know, he was feeling it today, he told me. So. Well, well according to Connor's Twitter, Robbie Law is probably going to fight again by the end of the year. According to Connor's Twitter, Robbie's Connor, what? Connor tweeted that he's, he thinks Robbie's going to fight again by the end of the year. <laughs> I, we've had a lot of conversations leading up to tonight, and then we've talked three times tonight. Yeah. He won't. Yeah, Robbie said he's done. Yeah, um, he won't. What did you make of Bo Nichols' performance? Another quick, knock, another quick finish. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's a wrestler. Let's start there. Uh, he fought a kid, real kid, 7-0. Took him on short notice without getting to study him and train for him. And, um, and this kid's got knockout power, and Bo looked damn good tonight. Every time this kid fights, he looks better and better. At what point do you just have to start throwing him into these? Because he's, he's had so few fights, but he's putting away these people on, that have the same amount of experience of him, but he's putting them away in under a minute. At what point do you just throw him into the top 15? Throw him into the, he fought a kid tonight that was 7-0. <laughs> what, were you going to throw him in a guy with 30 oh? I mean, uh, you know, when you look at the way fights are made in boxing, this kid's already, you know, um, way ahead of the game. Yeah, he, he even said that he's surprised at how fast. He's gone here. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, there's no hurry. Right. He's young. You know, he's only got a few fights. But the reality is, too, I'm, try, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but when we brought um, Cain Velasquez in. He was like 2 0, 3 0. Yeah, something like that. Maybe, maybe 3 or 4 0. But so, who knows? Um, a couple of unrelated to this fight card. Kamaru Usman was in here, and he said he still wants to fight Hamzat at 170 pounds. Have you talked to him at all while he was in town? No. We have not talked. Um, what do you do with Islam now? Because Alex said that he might have to have surgery on his arm. Charles did an interview earlier this week at UFCX saying that October might be too soon for him. So looking at that top 15, Gaethje and Poirier obviously fighting in a couple weeks. Who do you give him for Abu Dhabi? Yeah, I I'm, I'm going to announce Abu Dhabi real soon. No, no Abu Dhabi stuff because they want to coordinate with us when we do it. But we'll, we'll have the announcement on that card soon. Hey, Dana. Hey, yeah. um, going back to Robbie. He's the final fighter in the UFC who ever fought for Pride and one of like a couple who fought for Strike Force. It's an end of an era in that regard. Um, in hindsight, those purchases that you guys did of those two companies, how valuable have they been to the UFC? Massive. I mean, at the time, when you looked at the number that we paid for Pride at, the, at that time, it was, it was a massive number. Um, but if you look at the fights that we've made, you know, the guys that came over from Pride and all the fights that were made, it's just, it was one of the greatest deals of all time. And, um, Other than buying the UFC for $2 million. Yeah, and we had uh, Juliana Pena and Raquel Pennington both here tonight, and they're, you know, beating the drum to get that vacant title fight that Amanda left behind. Do you guys, have you put any thought in towards what you're going to do with that 35 belt? We're working on some stuff right now, yeah. And uh, speaking of belts, I spoke to Jorge Masvidal yesterday, and he wanted me to pitch you the idea of he wants to wrap the BMF title around the winner of Poirier and Gaethje. That's would pretty you cool. like? Would you sure. like to do that? It's we not can gonna, do that. Yeah, Done. not the Rock this time. Done. Congrats. All right. I you. did it. Hey, Dana, over here. Yeah. Um, so Alexander Pantoja winning the title, awesome performance. So he gets it. Brandon Royville was the backup for this fight. Yeah. Is he going to fight the winner? Even well, though he, he grabbed me as soon as I walked out of the octagon. He's like, yeah. let me get in there now. I'm, I'm ready. I want this fight. I'll beat both of these guys. You know, so he's fired up and wants that fight. Is he going to get it, though? We'll see. Okay, we'll see. And then uh, we talked about Dracus, and obviously we got to see how healthy he is. I would assume he's number one to fight Izzy. Would Sean Strickland be number two just with his performance a couple weeks ago? He seems like he's healthy if he wanted to step in there and fight for the title. Well, Strickland put himself in a really good position, man. Like, like I... When I, when I did If You Don't Know that week, I was saying to the press, win, lose, or draw, nobody wanted to fight this guy. And Strickland, who's ranked number seven, stepped up to the plate, took this fight, and, and look at what he did. So, yeah, he gets a lot of credit for taking and winning that fight, and especially winning the fight the way that he did. Yeah, and last one for me, Canadian got to ask, uh, Canada, any yeah. announcements soon for the next date? Vancouver was great. You, were, you, know, you saw the response there. I agree. Toronto a possibility? A lot of fighters from Toronto in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. N listen, nobody's more excited to get back to Toronto than me, man. I love that city. Um, there's so many things I love about Toronto. So ASAP, we'll be back there as soon as possible. Dana, in the back. There was a woman. Uh, your voice came out earlier. Who, uh, hi, Thank you. Yeah. Um, 
uh, Connor tweeted a little Santa Claus emoji and said he wants to return in December. Is there any update on that possibly happening? L listen, I, I'm glad you brought that up. <clears throat> um, you know, there's a lot of business that needs to be handled before we talk about this. And I was doing an interview on Friday and a bunch of fucking scumbags wrote stories that I said, fuck you, Sada. I don't care what you Sada says. It's not even remotely close to what I said. So first of all, I'd like to say fuck you to everybody that wrote that story, number one. And number two, there's a lot of stuff that has to go on before uh, you, you know he fights. So it's not even, my point was, no matter who's talking about it, whether it's USADA or whoever and this and that, it's not even worth talking about right now. Everybody wants to keep bringing it up so that pieces of shit can write stories like that. Um, never did I say, I don't give a shit what USADA thinks or disrespecting USADA or anything like that. It doesn't matter what anybody says. I don't know how this whole thing's going to play out. Let's wait and see. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, back here? Yeah. So in 2012, International Fight Week just started, right? 11 years later, when you think about how far this week has come just for this promotion, what are some thoughts and emotions that come to mind? What's the question? So International <laughs> Fight Week started in 2012, right? Yeah. So when you reflect 11 years later, yeah. what are some of like, the thoughts and emotions that you have? What, what are some that come to mind? Well, what's cool is you know, this, was a, this was an idea in, in our meeting room one time, and we thought we would pull together this whole uh, week where martial arts fans could come and celebrate you know, everything martial arts, everything, uh, you know, combat sports in a week, and, and here we are 11 years later. This was one of the best we've ever had. The expo was rocking. Um, you know, all the other activities that happened this week were amazing, and uh, yeah, it's, you know, I never really thought about it until you just asked me. It's, it's, it's awesome. Thank you. Yep. 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 How you doing? Good. Right, right. So, the 37.5 on 37.5. Fox Sports. Yeah. So I just want to go through the range of emotions. These guys helped build the company to what it is today. Uh, what's the range of emotions and how do you plan to include them into the business going forward? Yeah, I mean, that, that's why, you know, we've talked a lot leading up to this. We talked a lot tonight. Brought him back to my room as soon as the fight was over. Um, you know, he's special. It's, he's, he's a guy that, you know, it's almost like we grew up together in this thing. And, and you know, I saw him in Hawaii when he was 19 years old fighting and I uh, loved the style, I loved the way he fought, so I, I, I signed him. And it's like what this guy was talking to me earlier about Bo Nickel, you know, is Bo, was Bo Nickel, how, is it too soon? Is it, that, that's, that was the same question with Robbie Lawler at the time and here we are, he's almost 42 years old and he's still here, he's still fighting and he's retiring tonight. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's a special guy to, to, to the company and to me personally. Hey, who's that? Oh yeah, yeah. What, what what about him? Is he gonna stick around? He took the fight on short notice. We'll we'll absolutely give him another fight. Kid came in and you know yes. Yeah, I like him too. He's a great kid. I mean, everybody stood out tonight. It, it, so it would be completely unfair. If I look at this whole card and think about who, who stood out, I mean, there were a lot of standouts tonight, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know who I'd pick and say, oh, this guy was the guy, or, or this girl was the girl, which was an awesome fight too, big upset there. Uh, that, that would stand out. The, the card was awesome. You couldn't ask for a better card, especially to top off International Fight Week. Thank you very much. Thanks, brother. Dana? Yep. Um, this is one of those cards where um, a bunch of finishes. I I is this going to be one of those cards where you give out a, a lot of locker room bonuses, those infamous yeah. locker room bonuses? Yeah. Um, I was surprised that none of you said to me, how does Robbie Lawler not get the bonus going on? Don't worry about Robbie Lawler. <laughs> Robbie Lawler's going to be just fine. Uh, yeah, we'll take care of uh, men. I mean, you know. Yes. The answer is yes. I don't have to go through the roster, but yes. I mean, was it a thought to give everybody 50K, just like just one of those cards where you give everybody a bonus? The, the whole card 50K? Yeah. <laughs> hey, 
go work for this guy. This is the guy right here. Um, yeah. And then just did Dan Hooker and um, Jalen Turner have the fight of the night before Brandon Moreno? Yeah, 100%. I actually, like I told you about how everything works in matchmaking, we had that little debate, and I was saying, what about the Turner-Hooker fight? And uh, Sean felt like, uh, <clears throat> you know, there was more at stake in the main event and, you know, two of the best guys in the world and, you know, Sean won. Um, Jack Della Maddaleno uh, is in Vegas. He obviously didn't fight tonight. He wants to fight next, he wants to fight next week in Vegas. Is that, a, is that a possibility? I love it. Well, first of all, you know how I feel about that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I love it. I, I, we'll see. Yeah, I love it. And then finally for me, uh, there's, there was a video of John Jones in Vegas. He was at Jorge Mazaral's uh, thing. He was taking shots. Like, d does that kind of get you worried? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's a grown man. He, he can do whatever the hell he wants. Um, I always say this, John, more than 12 hours in Vegas is usually probably not a good, good idea for John. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Listen. John has done very well for himself. He's, he's been through a lot of shit. He's made it through. Uh, I don't know whose idea it was to keep John here for days, but uh, Hunter, was that your idea? <laughs> well, here we are. I'll, I'll plead the fifth on that, sir. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Yep, yes, ma'am. Way back here. Uh, Josiah Harrell was supposed to be on this card tonight. Um, we see a lot of what happens on television and during press conferences, but behind the scenes, there's a lot of health and safety protocols. How important is that for this organization, and how do you feel that you go above and beyond what other organizations are doing in terms of making sure those health and safety protocols are in, are in place? It's everything to us. It's the most important thing. Uh, in this company and we uh, you know it's it, there's been so many kids that, that we've caught stuff with uh, you know leading up to fights or when they first get here and start doing their medicals the ultimate fighter screening that we do on them the, the contender series screaming screening that we do on those kids we spend the money to make sure that all these th th these athletes are are safe and healthy um, yeah, it's everything. It's the most important thing in this business. We have a great track record, and hopefully that continues. Just a quick follow-up. Is there a ballpark amount that you spend annually on those protocols? Um, you know off the top of your head? How much do we spend on health and safety? Minimum of $10 million a year. Thank you. Yep. Donna, yes, sir. How are you? Hi. Um, I'm from Chihuahua, Mexico. I'm a local newspaper, and I have two questions for you. Yes, sir. The first question is, do you look um, the Pantera Rodriguez the same style, or do you see an other style right tonight? And this is the first question. And the other question, can you say something for me? Okay. Many people to Chihuahua come here driving, many, many people to see our champion, or see Jair Rodriguez, can, can you? Can you uh, tell something for these people and this ambition? Because, you know, right now, um, a little thing about the loss. We're going to need a translator for you, sir. Uh, does anybody in here speak Spanish? S say that in Spanish. To ask me that question in Spanish. Okay. La primera, si usted vio el mismo estilo de Jair Rodriguez, como siempre lo ha hecho, o si vio algo diferente en él, he asked if you saw the same style that Jay Rodriguez tonight, or do you see any changes in the style when you saw the fight tonight against Volkanovski? Um, oh, uh, Yair? Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, Yair does what Yair does. He's, he, he tried to stay on the outside. He tried to pick him apart. Volkanovski walked through it, took him to the ground, roughed him up the first few rounds. After he beat him up, then he said, okay, let, let's stand up, and he ended up finishing him. I think that Volkanovski not only came up with an incredible game plan, implemented it perfectly. Okay, la segunda es que mucha gente de Chihuahua vino aquí manejando para ver a Jair Rodríguez. Si usted puede decir algo eh, a ellos, ya que ahorita están un poco tristes por la, por, porque Jair perdió. Is there any words of encouragement for the people of Chihuahua? They drove all the way from Chihuahua, uh, Pantera's home state, to Nevada. It's a very long drive, it's about 15 hours. 
Do you have any words of encouragement for his family and friends that made all the way, that drive all the way here and then they saw this loss? Yeah, I understand. Listen, I, I know how passionate Mexican fans are for their, uh, you know, uh, for their athletes. They're, the big, they're, they're one of the biggest supporters in the world of, of their own people. It's one of the many cool things that I love about Mexico and me the Mexican people. Uh, you know, since as far back as I can remember, you know, Mexicans support other Mexicans. It's incredible. They love their country. They support their people. You know, it's, it's fucking awesome, to be honest with you. Uh, I, love, I love it. And I've been so excited for many years to, ha to have a night like tonight where real Mexicans come in and fight and real Mexicans drive up from Mexico to come watch. I'm sorry it didn't turn out the way that you wanted, but, you know, we're opening this PI pretty soon, and I think this is just the beginning of many long road trips from Mexico. Dana? One question right back here. Yep. I uh, want to go back to the Expo. Obviously, the NBA has things like the All-Star Game. NFL has a whole week of events for the Super Bowl. Uh, can you put into words what it's like to know that fans not just have a fight night to come to, but a whole event where they can celebrate their love of mixed martial arts and the UFC brand in general. Yeah, that was the reason we did it. That's what the, th the whole thing was built around. And uh, again, we, we have a whole creative department that, that, that works on this thing. As soon as this is over, they'll start working on next year. So this, this is something that's planned out, you know, months to a year in advance. And, and, and I think it gets better every year. Today was, uh, this, this week was, was one of the best that we've ever done. Ilya Taporia was cage side. I know we're coming off a situation where we just had an interim title for the featherweight strap, but if Volkanovski's having surgery and he wants to come back and challenge for the 155 pound strap, would you consider doing another interim featherweight title? I don't know. I, I, I don't think that Volkanovski's going to be out that long, to be honest with you. I don't think this is, a, this is a major surgery. It's a scope or something like that. I personally don't know enough about it, but I think it's a scope. I don't think it's anything that serious. Bo Nichols only been doing MMA for a little bit over a year. Do you think he's ready to challenge for a top 15 opponent? Or maybe he needs a little bit more time, maybe yeah, one more away. There's no need to throw him at a top 15 yet. He's a young guy. He's just getting started. He's just starting to feel himself out. Believe me, when, when he's ready, you guys won't, we don't even have to have this conversation. We'll all know when he's ready. Um, but there's no rush to, to, to get Bo Nichols into the top 15. Last question, without giving it away, is it more than likely that Leon Edwards is going to be either fighting at Madison Square Garden or Abu Dhabi defending his title, the welterweight division? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Dana, uh, you had Trump there at the cage side with you. What was that experience like, having him right there? Listen, we all know he's one of my very, very good friends. I love being around him. I had dinner with him last night till midnight. He's fucking awesome. He's hilarious, and I love hanging out with him. And he's such a huge fight fan. So he knows everybody. He knows everything. You know, it's just... I love the guy. Did he say what his uh, favorite matchup was? Um, no, he, he, he liked the whole card. You know, you want to know how crazy this guy is? He, he's driving here. He got here at like, uh, I want to say he got here at like 540. He watched the earlier fights on his phone. You know what I mean? It's like he, he loves the fights. And uh, what's really cool about being a fan of this the way that he is is the fighters all love him too. So uh, he had a blast tonight. What was his reaction when uh, Driscus uh, Duplessis came up to him? Yeah, no, he, he, he was blown away. He was basically talking about, he's like, God damn, this guy's huge. He's big. He's a big, strong guy. And he is. I mean, most of you have met him one-on-one. -on -one. You ever grab him, like, touch his arm or whatever? The guy's like this table. He's, he, he's, a, he's a beast, man. So, um, yeah, no. I, I don't, what was the question? Oh, well, yeah, you answered it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's happy to meet him, yeah. Uh, Stipe, what was that like getting that fight done? Was that hard to... Mm, no, no. Stipe's been ready to go. Um, yeah, Stipe was ready to go. Talk to him tonight. He's happy. He's in a good spot. He's ready. Mass Square Garden. He's excited. Thanks, brother. Dane, over here. Yep. There are a lot of Contender Series graduates tonight on one of the biggest cards of the year. How is it like seeing the, the success of that series unfold throughout these past couple of years? If you come into our matchmaking room, okay, so these boards are laid out because I have to see everything on the wall. That's why the room was built the way that it is. And there's, the red, the, there's red stickers by uh, some of the fighters, and there's blue stickers by the other. The red came from Tough, the blue come from Contender Series. 
the entire wall now. I mean, when we have a fight, you're talking half the card are guys from the Contender Series. I love the Contender Series. It's one of the best fight shows on television ever, and I can't wait for it to start up again here. I, 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 love, I love that show. Are you looking to take it inter internationally? Well, it is internationally. Well, like um, maybe do some contender series out, outside of the U.S.? Nah, I like driving right across the street. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Very Dana. Yeah. Uh, Ilya Toporia, we didn't see you at UFC Jacksonville. What did you think was his last performance and how close is he to a title at Fedorian? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, every Tuesday we talk a lot about him now. And uh, I had never considered or thought about going to Spain. Now I have the team working on Spain. How close are we to a Spain card? We're close. It's coming. Yeah, Dana just here. You Hi. talked about uh, Leon and Colby. Uh, Leon, of course, is in town. Have you managed to speak to him at all? And, and would that fight make most sense in MSG? Uh, somebody just asked me that. It's, it, it's, it's uh, MSG or Abu Dhabi, one of those. One of the two. And have you managed uh, to catch up at all with Leon? We, 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 we are very dialed in with Leon, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Got, yes, sir. Dana, right in the middle. Um, talking about tough uh, with the Chandler getting the first six wins right now, do you think, uh, do you, would you have rather have changed up the style of tough at all during this season? And why is that? No, ju I'm just talking about like uh, with the contenders like guys have already been in the in the UFC, and then do you think you would rather, looking back at it, have like one side beat all the all of the older guys, and then one side beat or split them up instead? With the what? No. Fair enough. Do you have any update on uh, Yuri Prohaska or the 205? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're soon. We'll, uh, we'll be announcing that soon, too. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You guys done with me? Have a great night. Thank you.